Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one I want to talk about the difference between subtractive editing and additive editing. In this project we've got five clips that we uh, filmed from a recent local basketball game. Now the subtractive approach which is most common would be something like this where you'd grab all your clips, put them in a new timeline and then you would simply just watch through and subtract the pieces that you don't want to include. So you just imagine you've done it to your whole timeline and then you're left with a timeline of selects. So you might have five or six really selected clips and you've broken down the timeline from five minutes of original footage down to let's say 45 seconds in this case. That is a subtractive approach. Uh, the most common way though, and I think the most powerful way to learn to edit as an editor, particularly if you're just getting started, is to take an additive approach to editing. So if we start again, we've got the exact same five clips in the media pool, but instead of dropping them onto the timeline, I'm going to show you a sub clip workflow, which simply means if I hit enter, I've now brought it up in the source monitor and I can use those same shuttle keys. So L moves the playhead forward, J moves it back, K to pause. If I double click L, it'll fast forward and vice versa with J. I can also go to the end of the clip by hitting control full stop and the start of the clip by control comma. As I watch through, I can click I to create an in point and O to create an out point. I can do a couple of things at this point. If I wanted to, I could drop it into the timeline and start doing the exact same thing that I did by creating a selects reel and a timeline. But I'm not gonna do that in this case. I'm gonna delete that timeline. I'm gonna go back to this clip up in the media pool, hit enter again. My in and out points are still there. And I'm going to hit P to create a new sub clip. You can also right click, but you need to set up a shortcut if you're going to be efficient with this workflow. P for subclip and enter to create. What that's done is it's created a brand new file here, which is a subclip file. If I bring this up now into my source monitor, you can see this clip is exactly the selection that I made prior. One really cool feature that you can do is hit R, which will split the subclip at that point and create two new subclips. So I'm actually going to delete that prior clip and now I have a more refined selection on that subclip. So what I can do now is hold shift J and L and over in the media pool you can start to see that I can cycle through these clips. So shift L moves forward, shift J moves back. So I can go back to my original clip and continue to watch it through in case there's anything else I want to include. And we'll go from here, I for in. And O for out. P for subclip, enter to drop a new subclip in. Because I've finished with that clip, I want to move on to the next clip. So I'm going to hit shift and move forward to C023 and simply just hit L to start playing again. Quite like that. So I'm going to hit I for in. And keep that zoom and pull back. O for out, P for subclip, enter for a new subclip and L to continue playing through. I for in, great, O, P, enter. So I'm still looking for the good parts of the take and I want to keep that now. So O for out, P for subclip, enter to create a new subclip and continue watching. If you want to remove your in and out points, you can hold option X, which removes the in and out points completely. And let's say you've selected and you're 20 seconds through watching a clip, but you actually want to go back to the in point to tweak it slightly. You can just hit shift I, which will take you back to the in point. And if you've created an out point, shift I is in and shift O is out. So it's a really powerful way of quickly navigating. For example, if I watch here and I go shift I, and then I can tweak the I by hitting I again. We'll do one more shot in this same clip. O for out, P, enter. So you can see I can do everything with my right hand. I don't have to use my left hand or the mouse at all, which allows me to really just zone in on the computer as I'm watching. Okay, I for in. Great, O, P, enter. 
So what you can see is I've actually taken this one clip and chosen a whole variety of selects within that one single clip. Now this is an additive method because I'm only choosing the pieces that I like. Traditionally you could call this a three point editing method where I'm creating an in and an out and I'm dropping it into a sub clip. You can obviously drop it into a timeline but you'll see as we start working with sub clips, the power of sub clips is once you've created all of your selections, you can just simply go up to the search menu and choose all fields, just simply type in sub and it will highlight all of your sub clips for you. You can select all of these and create a new folder using the selection which was command option shift backslash. So now what I have is all of the original clips, the five clips here, but I also have a folder of selected sub clips. You can name this whatever you want, but if you go into this folder, you can now see if I drop all of these onto the timeline, they are really tightly refined selections that I've made. And you can go ahead and edit from these without the fluff of all of the source footage that you were originally presented with. So let's fast forward two weeks and you've got your final edit and you just want to tweak a few B-roll shots. The beauty of a subclip workflow is you can always refer back to the media pool and cycle through these subclips and just watch them through in your source monitor. Just like this, shift J, and you can quickly find the clip that you want to use and drop that into your master timeline for your edit. It saves you the hassle of finding the selects timeline, opening it up, potentially using pancake timelines or copying and pasting out of the timeline into your master timeline. This is just scratching the surface of a subclip workflow. The thing with subclip is it allows you to get into the additive editing mindset, which is putting you in the driver's seat, selecting the pieces that you want, and intentionally putting those pieces where you want in the timeline, and starting from a baseline of zero in your timeline and adding intentional footage in as you go. Whereas a subtractive method, as you saw, is just a string out of all the footage and eventually you whittle it down to shots where you can start organising. I hope that helped in some way. If you like this video, please give it a like, give it a comment and subscribe to this channel. For now, peace out. We'll see you in the next one.